So hello everyone and I welcome all of you to our this coaching call which is part one of our batch program. So in the first section of this today's call we will cover the revision of chapter one and two that we did last time and then we will try to do around five to ten questions depending on the time and I'm sure that with this everybody will be clear about the topics that we have covered and the course content. Okay. And if anybody has any question, just let me know. Okay. So everybody can see my screen. Yes. Okay. So starting with the first topic that we covered, we had three phases of the program, which is program definition, program delivery and program closure. This on the vertical line is a program boundary. This actually is my own handwritten. I have made myself. So as I told you, I always like to make by hand rather than on the software. So it's much uh, easier to remember. So in the program definition phase, we had two surfaces, which is program formulation and program planning. Okay. In the program delivery phase, we had three surfaces, I would say which number one was component authorization and planning. Then we had component oversight and integration. Then we had transition and closure. And then the last was program closure. Is it clear? And then yeah. we had five, yes. we have five domains, which was program strategy alignment, program benefits management, program stakeholder engagement, program governors, and program life cycle. So what I have done, I have tried to map all these five domains into the same picture. So first of all, go down, where is my mouse? This is the program strategy alignment. In this case, the first document that we are making is program business case, then is program charter, and then is the program roadmap. So these were the three main documents that we were making in the pro program strategy alignment. And these three documents are made under program formulation surface. If you overlap this program formulation with this thing, the three documents are made in program formulation phase. So for the exam, you have to remember that in the strategy alignment domain, we are making the three documents under the program formulation surface, which are program business case, program charter and program roadmap. And during the complete cycle of strategy alignment, we have environmental assessments and program risk management strategy. So this risk management strategy is up to the program delivery phase. It is finishing here and environmental assessment is over the complete phases of the program. So this covers our first domain. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. Clear, sir. Clear. Okay. Then the second domain is program benefits management. In benefits management, what is our first step is benefits identification, which is coming in the program definition phase. Then we have benefit analysis and planning, benefits delivery, benefits transition, and benefits sustainment. Important thing to remember, this benefits sustainment is crossing the program boundary, which means that the benefits sustainment will be continued even the program has been closed. For the exam point of view, you have to remember that there's only one domain out of five which may be continued even after the closure of the program. And that domain is program benefits management and in the program benefits management, that phase is benefit sustainment. So this is our second domain. The third domain is program governance. First of all, we have governance practices, which is completely over the program definition phase. Program governance, governance practices completely over the program definition phase. Then we have governance roles. It is also in the program definition phase, starting mid of the program formulation phase. And during the whole program life cycle, we have governance design and implementation. So this is covering the whole area and governance practices is in the program definition phase and governance roles is also in the program definition phase. It's clear? 
and then in the fourth uh, domain we have program stakeholder engagement what are we doing in this phase in this domain first of all is stakeholder identification in which we make the stakeholder register then we have stakeholder analysis then we make the stakeholder engagement plan so in the program definition phase which had two sub phases program formulation and program planning we are making three documents or we are doing three steps in the program stakeholder engagement domain which is stakeholder identification stakeholder analysis and stakeholder engagement plan and stakeholder engagement we are doing over the complete program life cycle and stakeholder communications means communicating the status of our program what is the progress whatever is the requirement of the stakeholders we are uh, keeping them updated with our communications so this picture is clear to everyone i have tried to summarize everything in one domain so if you get any question what is being done in program formulation subphase what is the done in program planning phase what are the phases what are the domains everything is covered in this 5 uh, uh, minutes in this one page is it clear yes anybody has any question okay so this gives you the revision of the complete overview that we did in the first section of our previous call okay now i will jump into chapter number 1 so everybody can see my screen as i told you that as this is handwritten so maybe you will have some difficulty in reading but this is very interactive i have made so chapter number 1 i will revise the whole chapter in 5 minutes okay if anybody has any question just raise your hand in chapter number 1 what we studied first of all we studied what is a program okay program consists of components projects subsidiary programs or other program related activities okay so this was our definition of the program why do we initiate a program so i wrote it here initiation of programs we can initiate a program to pursue new goals objectives or strategies programs are begun before start of work on their component projects and programs this line is very very important why because it means program what was the first phase of the program which is program definition okay and it had program formulation and program planning whereas in the program delivery phase the work on the component started remember in the previous slide so component was authorized and initiated in the program delivery phase so this is the same what he has written here programs are begun before start of work on their component projects or, pro or programs or sub programs okay then organization recognizes that ongoing projects programs are related by common outcomes it means that maybe we are in the middle of our program and the organization realize that there are many projects that are being done by the organization that can easily be related by common outcomes so in order to enhance the benefits we will deliver or we will get we will try to we will merge them into the in the form of a program then we studied relationship among portfolio program and project so this is the uh, flow chart i have made first of all is organizational strategy this is at the top this is our starting point so whenever he will say anything about how the program is initiated or what is done before we initiate any portfolio any program that is organizational strategy that is our starting point in every paper question if it comes okay so starting point is organizational strategy then comes the portfolio okay in portfolio we can have program another sub portfolio or operations this is a key distinguish between portfolio and program that in portfolio we can have programs projects or operations then comes the program if i break it down in program we can have another sub program we can have projects 1 2 3 any projects but no operations this is the distinguishing between portfolio and program then we discuss what is program management program manage is management is anything management of the programs to make it successful and who is doing it program manager is authorized by the organization 
so it means that the main role in program management is of the program manager okay then we studied relationship among portfolio project program management and role in opm which was organizational project management and this opm is same like this one that we have the circle starting from organization strategy going to portfolio to program to projects then to operations and then a cyclic thing this is called opm or organizational program management organization project management then what is the interactions among all three this we have we can clearly see between in this uh, figure relationship between program and portfolio management or relationship between program and project management in this the key word is collaborative whenever he say that how program manager is uh, discussing or interacting with project manager portfolio management manager operation manager or any other stakeholder answer is collaborative they are working together they are collaborating with each other so that the uh, target is to make the program successful so this is the key word you have to remember in every interactions okay they are interrelated okay and they are collaborative with each other then what was the relationship among organizational strategy program management and operation management is same what is shown in this figure okay of organization is the top then we have portfolio and operations is under the portfolio only what was a business value business value is a sum of all tangible and intangible elements of business so whenever he will say about something which is quantifiable means a increase of 100000 dollars reduction in the schedule these are tangible benefits and if we say that increasing the well being of the person increasing the morale of somebody is intangible elements so if we are talking about the business value what i will get from the program this is sum of all tangible and intangible benefits then what is the role of a program manager the main role of the program manager is to interact with portfolio and project managers means he has to coordinate or co communicate with the, the person who is above him and also who is below him the program manager should have specific or minimum required competencies which are communication skills which means he should be a very good communicator stakeholder engagement skills at every stage of the program he has to engage the stakeholders try to get their support for the program may mitigate the negative uh, aspects from them change management skills whenever we have a change request he should be able to manage the changes leadership skills like seven leadership we will be studied in pmp so whatever are the different leadership styles should be processed by the program manager analytical skills to see whether this will work or not work okay analytical thinking and integration skills because we know the program consists of multiple projects or sub programs he should has the ability to integrate the benefits of all the components so as a program we make it successful and we get all the things integrated among each other so these are the competencies of the program manager then what are the program manager abilities what he can do what he should be what he should be able to do he should be able to manage the details if any detailed uh, things are required he should have strong working knowledge means he should be a technical person relevant to his field interact seamlessly with stakeholders he has to uh, once the stakeholders have been identified he has to interact with them he has to communicate with them he cannot keep them in isolation because whatever we are doing the main purpose is to keep the stakeholders updated uh, informed and supporting for our projects collaborative relationship between team members so that is the keyword i told you collaboration whether it is with the team members with the portfolio manager or anybody he has to be collaborative uh, relationship with all the team members leverage business knowledge he should have the business knowledge so he should know what are the values i am getting from this program and facilitate understanding and agreement so whatever are the contextual things we should be able to facilitate and make the thing easy to understand easy to communicate what is the role of a program sponsor you have to remember he is accountable for enabling success so this is a very important question whenever he will ask for a particular person or particular role in the program who is accountable to make the to enable the success or the person who provide the resources to the program he is a program sponsor and what is the role of a program management office in which in this the key words are providing the templates providing the standards okay means anything which can be used in your program also in other other programs under the same organization 
okay so they have the specific templates standards so that everybody is following the standard practices so this is the keywords for the program management office so this complete one page and what i have explained in the last 5 minutes covers your chapter number 1 is it clear or any other question please raise your hand uh, just one question uh, this uh, program sponsor is accountable or program manager is accountable just for program sponsor is accountable okay right is accountable for enabling the success and making the resources available for the program the program manager is only responsible to make the things happen whatever have been given by them but ultimately sponsor is accountable okay this, once you will study the book or the slide it will be clear yeah. any other person any question is it clear is it understandable grima yes sir all clear like no doubt okay so now i will go to chapter number 2 so this is my mind map for chapter number 2 the topic was program management performance domains so what are the five domains we already saw program strategy alignment program benefits management program stakeholder engagement program governance program life cycle management okay all five domains interact with each other with varying degree of intensity so but they are interacting they are linked with each other okay and it depends on how much intensity they are interacting with each other organizational strategy portfolio management program strategy management is same what we have studied in the last uh, flow chart i have shown you then we have portfolio and program distinctions this is very important the two key words to remember are relatedness and time whatever components are coming under the program they are related with each other and they are time bound what do you mean by relatedness in program work included is inter inter is interdependent means they are linked with each other work in portfolio may span a variety of diverse initiatives and these can be independent so whenever he say that the components or the project components are independent of each other then we can manage them as a portfolio when he will say that the components are interdependent or interlinked with each other then only we can include them in a program what do we what do we mean by time programs are temporary have a definite beginning future end point means this is a time bound just like the projects on the other hand portfolio are not expected to be constrained to end on a specific date means that's why operations are coming under the portfolio which doesn't have a specific end date then we have to distinguish between program and project we have to distinguish between program and pro, uh, program and project distinctions which is number one uncertainty managing change and complexity just remember these three keywords whenever he asks you about how program and project are distinguished with each other we have to we have to see uncertainty managing change and complexity what do you mean by what do we mean, we mean by uncertainty uncertainty is high in the beginning individual projects may be considered to be more certain than programs it's very simple if i have to plan something for next 3 days it is small so it is more certain but on the other hand programs which are of longer span if i have to plan something for 6 months these are uh, more uncertain the same understanding you can have in between program and projects managing change change can be internal or external change program should be better equipped to deal with change in program change and project change in project change to control the impact of variability on their baseline so whenever we are talking about the project change is only affecting one component of my program on the other hand as i have long time to equip with the change so he is writing here the program shall be better equipped to deal with change because they have more time they have more span then we have complexity in complexity again we have program complexity and project complexity in program complexity it comes from the fol following factors number one is governance complexity stakeholder complexity definition benefits delivery interdependency resource complexity 
scope and risk. So just need to, you just uh, remember these eight things, nothing specific for the exams. But main thing is that we have to distinguish between program and projects based on uncertainty, managing change and complexity. And in the project complexity, we have organizational complexity and dynamic complexity. So this is all in chapter number two. The linking I have already explained you in the first uh, mind map in which what is covering in uh, different phases, how these five domains are interlinked with each other. So this chapter is basically covered in that. But further, remember relatedness, time, differentiation, distinction between program and projects, which uncertainty, managing change and complexity. So that covers your chapter number two. Anything not clear? Tessin, sir. Clear, sir. Clear. Yes, any person who has any question or something which is not clear? Okay, so I will request everybody to make the mind maps while, while you are revising it. And you can share with all in the group also. And uh, it's up to you whether you use the handwritten mind maps or whether you use the any other app, Miro or whatever is there thing. Okay. Okay, so now if it is clear, I will sh we will just solve some questions of chapter number one and two, and then I will go to chapter number three. Is it okay? Yes, it's okay. Oh, okay. So everybody can see my screen. Not yet. Mind map slide is there. No, I have changed it. Now, can you see? Yes, yes, yes now it's okay. So question number 56, okay, the time starts now. So this was an easy question, but maybe you can get this question in the exam. So what are the, our PMI code of ethics? These are responsibility, respect, fairness, and honesty. Okay. So just remember this first step, this is same, whether it's PMP, PGMP, or any other thing. Whenever he talks about PMI code of ethics, we have four things, responsibility, respect, fairness, and honesty. Okay. Yes. Next, next question.
बारिश हो रही है ओके सो वेन कैन द प्रोग्राम बी कंसिडर कंप्लीटेड सो वेन जस्ट रिमेंबर इन दिस केस वेन एवर दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट एनी कंपोनेंट्स द कंपोनेंट्स कैन बी प्रोजेक्ट कैन बी सब प्रोग्राम कैन बी एनी अदर एक्टिविटीज सो वेन आई एम गोइंग टू गो इन द प्रोग्राम क्लोजर फेज और वेदर आई एम गोइंग टू से द प्रोग्राम इज कंप्लीटेड i have to make sure that every component of that program has delivered its intended benefits means it is closed and the purpose of having those projects are fully com completed so this is clear to everybody we uh, when can the, the program can be considered completed when projects a b c and d have delivered their intended program benefits good next question so as we have seen what he is asking that how the five domains are linked with each other so the correct answer is c interrelated and interdependent so in the exam just be careful about the minor things that's why i try to mix it up the answers but just remember interrelated and interdependent nothing is independent with each other okay clear so everybody gave the same correct answer so it's clear next question please somebody mute his mic you have a noise kamal sahab can you please mute okay thank you so uh, we discuss the abilities of the project program manager he should have integration skill analytical skill change management skill communication skill kamran sir what was another two skills they be discussed stakeholder engagement yes. and uh, leadership leadership yes yes 
So the main purpose of the question is to also remember those six skills. And this is just a definition of the analytical thinking that we say that should have the skill to assess the potential impact of external events on the program, strategic plans or things. So this is called analytical skill. Next. Yes, Grima. Sir, maybe I missed that part. Which topic these skills came? In the program management skills. Program, what competencies and what skills he should have. Okay, competency topic. Okay, got it. Okay, so as I explained in the mind map also, this you will see minimum five to 10 questions in the exam in which the answers will be project manager, program manager, PMO and program sponsor. So you have to be very clear about the roles and responsibilities of these four stakeholders. So as I told before, project manager, wherever he talks about the project manager, just think of he is only responsible for the component project. And he has to ensure only his component project remains in line with the organizational strategy number one, because organizational strategy is common for portfolio program and project. That is a one responsibility of project manager. Align, remaining aligned with the organizational strategy and try to finish the component project within the time frame, whatever he has, and deliver their intended benefits to the program. That is the only role and responsibility of the project manager. When I'm talking about the program manager, he is responsible to make sure that the program uh, delivers the intended benefits in line with the organizational strategy, number one. Number second, he has to collaborate with the portfolio manager and project managers. Number three, he has to make sure that all the component projects are also delivered on time or deliver their intended benefits. Then only his program will be successful. And just keep in mind, if we have one program and it has, for example, five component projects, and even if one component project will not be closed due to it cannot deliver the intended benefits, the program cannot be closed. Is clear? Come on, sir. If we have, it depends on wh even whatever are the component projects, even if one program manager, uh, the component project will not be finished, the pro program cannot be successful. So that is the responsibility of the program manager. What is the responsibility right. of pro program sponsor? He is accountable for enabling, uh, for enabling the success, number one. Secondly, he provides resources for the program. That is the role of the stakeholder. And PMO Grima is not accountable for enabling the success. And if you are talking, if you thought about resources, but, you thought about yes, resources, yes. right? So I will explain. Correct. PMO is only responsible to manage the resources between the program, between the components of the program. That means that if I have only one resource, that has to be shared among multiple components on a program, then PMO can manage it like a common pool that this is a common pool, he will see, okay, project A needs this uh, manpower in January, then February, this 
is a role of the PMO, but he cannot provide the resources because providing the resources means arranging the new resources. It, it is involving the cost. So that is the responsibility of the program uh, for the program sponsor. Okay. The wording so, but, is there. Yes. But, but sponsor deals with this budget and all, no money uh, matter. Like how resource thing comes in picture. Because what, resources like manpower and all, right? On my understanding. Yes, resources is a manpower, equipment, machinery, material, whatever you need. If I need to buy two mobile cranes, so how PMO can arrange the resource for me? The, the uh, sequence would be that sponsor will provide the resources. He will buy the two mobile cranes for the program. And then PMO can help us to arrange or share the resources of the crane between five component projects. So we can say a sponsor provides the resources and PMO manage them. Yes, manage them or share them. Manage, you can say. Yes. And resources only if it is in the common pool, then only PMO. But if, for example, I am a program manager and I have gotten the resources for the particular program, then program manager is responsible to manage them, not PMO. PMO will only be consulted or it will be in the supported, supporting role available at the backside of the program manager to support him whenever he needs any templates, standards, or support to share the resources. Yes, Kamal sir. Um, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I just want to clarify one thing. When you mentioned that uh, PMO uh, manages the resources, uh, for me, it's a little contradictory because uh, a program manager manages the program mm -hmm. and all its related, uh, uh, how should I say, domains, right? Yes. yes. And that includes uh, allocation of resources. So mm -hmm. in, in my mind, what I understand is program sponsor is responsible or accountable to arrange the resources or provide mm -hmm. the resources for the program. PMO uh, is supposed to allocate resources as per requirement of program manager, whereas program manager manages the resources within the program. Yes, is your, my understanding? Yes, yeah, 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 sure. It was only the wrong word I chose manage, but your understanding is much clearer. Allocating is PMO can do, but manager is uh, by program manager. That's why I clarified the second step. Once it is given to the program, it has to be done by the program manager. But if you have to share the resources, Allocation, you, what is right? Allocation is right for the PMO. Thank you for that. Yeah, because I, I am looking at it from the reverse direction. I am looking at it from the bottom up approach. Uh -huh. The program manager requests PMO to arrange the resources. According to his requirement, the PMO raises the requirement to the sponsor that we need, let's say, two mobile cranes. Okay. And the sponsor's uh, responsibility is to make them available. And mm -hmm. then PMO confirms to program manager that we have them mm -hmm. and uh, we can allocate them and they provide the program manager. And the program manager then, according to his schedule, according to his scope of work, can uh, further allocate them as per requirements. Correct. This is this is the way I'm looking at it. Yes, it's correct. Perfectly fine. Griba, is it okay, clear now? Thank you. Yes, sir. Good. It was a good discussion and it covers four or five questions in this regard. Okay. Next.
Okay, so here, with whom the project or program manager should seek the support to provide the centralized support for managing changes. So what is the key word here is centralized support. Centralized support, what we discussed in the previous question, like a common pool where everything is available and we have to coordinate. So that is the role of the program management office. Okay, so this type of questions will come in the exam. This is very relevant to the PMI original question. But I just rephrase it, but just make sure about the keywords as I told in the mind maps also. Whenever there's a keyword of centralized or, or, or a template or a standard format, it has to become from the program management office. Okay. Next. So here the question is asking about the program or portfolio distinction. And we have seen that the two distinctions between program and portfolio is time and relatedness. So the correct answer would be B. And the scenes up, if I ask you the same question or in the, what are the distinguish uh, between program and project? So what are the three distinguish, distinguishing between program and project? Yes, sir. Anyone can answer. Raise your hand. That one is uncertainty, managing changes, and complexity. Uh huh. Okay. And where we studied this, uh, Kamal sir, where we see time, cost, and scope, where were we discussing these items? These are usually discussed in project. Yes. A project is bound by time, cost, and scope. Yes, so this is very good. And, so, but, and, but, but as, in, as, as in this question states, uh, it basically, uh, as I read this question, I can see that they are talking at, at the strategy level, mm -hmm. where whether it should be a portfolio or a program. Mm -hmm. And in these type of decisions, uh, cost is not considered. Cost comes yes. secondary. Yes, because this good. is a strategic decision. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have to decide either to perform it as a portfolio or program. But no matter what you choose, the important thing is the relatedness. Yes. And hydropower projects, similar projects which will deliver similar uh, output mm -hmm. and obviously it will uh, attribute uh, accumulate to uh, the country's power requirements common so it goals. has to be relatedness yes exactly common goals so relatedness is number one mm -hmm. and second thing is time this is why i did not choose a or c because the cost uh, in these decisions cost comes after this decision very good so this is my experience yes yeah, this is your experience and also as per the pmi he says that whenever we are talking about the organizational strategy level, he never talks about the cost. He only talks about the time and relatedness. These are the key words distinguishing between portfolio and program. Okay. Next.
So this is an interesting question. Ajay, are you with us? Because you are not typing the answer. Maybe you are driving. Yeah, sorry, I'm multitasking, so I'm not able to type. Okay, okay, but you are, you are understanding the question, right? Is it clear? Oh yeah, hundred percent. Okay, good. Thank you okay. for checking in. Okay. So you see here now the question is asking you tell him that the difference are found in the way programs and projects are managed. So what was the difference we studied in our mind map or in the book between program and project? That was uncertainty change and complexity. Kamal sir, you wrote change, complexity and scope. Scope is not mentioned in the program level. Is we, we discussed yes. answer. Uh, the scope is not mentioned in program level, but uh, a program consists of multiple interdependent or interrelated projects. Mm -hmm. In my, in my understanding, uh, the manager is trying to explain the difference between program and projects. If a project yes. has uh, less scope, less complexity, mm. maybe more changes during mm. its execution. But mm. when a program handles at a strategic level, yes. it does not involve uh, much complexity. It does not, uh, you don't worry about changes in its execution during mm. its execution, but the scope is large because you, ha you have more than one projects in a program usually. That's why I wrote D, but okay. uh, maybe no, I'm wrong. No, no, your concept is clear, but just remember uh, uh, one thing is very important here, as Mr. Kamal has said. We are discussing about program management topic or the we are doing PGMP certification, okay? In PGMP, we, we are to, what is our course content? We are talking about three phases in the program and five domains, okay? Let me put it in that way. So what is thing we are discussing about strategic alignment? So strategy will come everywhere. We're talking about here the benefits. We are talking about st stakeholders, governance, and life cycle. So in program level, we basically talk about the benefits delivery, not the scope word. And talking particularly about the scope, the concept is same what you have explained. But in program level, every time he will say, you have to see what benefits you are expecting from this program or how will you deliver these benefits? How have you, what is the progress of the benefits, right? Same thing that we discussed on the PMP level, we were talking about the word scope. What is the scope of this project? What is the percentage of work that has been done? It was terms of the scope, but here in program, he is talking about the benefits. That is the first thing you have to remember. And secondly, when he's talking about the difference between the programs and projects, so as per the PMI standard management, he's saying clearly uncertainty, program has a high uncertainty at the start, change program has better equipment to, uh, is better to keep with change and complexity. We talked about uh, project complexity has organizational complexity and dynamic complexity. And the program complexity, we studied eight complexity, governance complexity, risk, stakeholder, and like this and that, okay? So just for the broad level, just we have to focus on the keywords here, which are three, uncertainty, change, and complexity. Nothing to be mentioning about the scope in general in the PGMP domain. It's clear, Kamal sir? Thank you. Okay. So I think we can do two more questions than this two, Yes, Sabir Sab. Uh, just one, actually, just for the previous question. Uh, <clears throat> can we walk, go back here? So yes. it means that what you are saying is that we have to focus that being a program, what mm -hmm. are the main focus area for the program only? Whatever is in the project that we are not, is where, that we should not go for that one. Because uncertainty, change and complexity, as Mr. Kamal was saying, the scope is related to project only. So here we should focus only uh, we should highlight only those things which are related to program, not to the project, basically, right? Yes, yes. If in the question he's talking about the program, and surely he will talk about the program. But if, for, for example, if any question comes from the PMP, then we have to be careful. That's the only thing. But whenever we are talking about the program, we have to concentrate on the program level thing. Okay. Okay, got it. Thank you.
the second last question for today. Can you bring the next question? You can see. I'm seeing the same question. Yeah, I can see. Okay. Can I can some... see this question number 64. I can see that. Yes. 64. Yeah. 64. We are at 64. Yes. Right. So we are doing question number 64. Is it visible to everybody? Uh, no, actually, I think my screen is stuck at question 63. Okay. So probably, probably no. common has to be started. No, that was okay. We were able to see it. It's just that one connection. I have only oh. typed that. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. Now I am. Yeah, refresh it one more time. Maybe. Okay, now everybody can see. Sixty-four question. Yes, I can see sixty-four. Okay, let's do this question. Okay, so now we have a dispute. We in the question you say that two program project managers working in the same program are using different templates. So whenever the keyword comes about template, framework, standards, something like a centralized thing like that, so answer is PMO. The correct answer is option number C. Review the issue with program management office to determine which template to use. So in this case, option number A is also sometimes uh, somehow relevant that we have to discuss directly with the project managers, but this is not a dispute that has to be addressed face to face or directly with that persons, okay? So whenever he's talking about the template that I need to use, I have to go to the PMO. So this is the last question for this today. Okay, so the program has three phases and five domains. Which of the following domain may continue even after the program closure phase has been completed? It means what is crossing that bond program boundary line was only benefit sustainment domain. And that benefit sustainment comes under benefit management uh, domain. I see some C here. Kamal Sab, why you wrote stakeholder engagement? 
uh, once the program boundary has finished, only benefits the statement is outside of that boundary. Nothing, no other phase is, uh, is outside of the program boundary. Kumar sir, can you hear me? So I think he lost the connection, but this is very clear that only benefits management domain, benefits management domain, which has the sub, uh, the process of benefits statement is possible after program management, uh, the program boundary has finished. So this covers our 10 questions, revision of chapter one and two, and I'm confident that if, Please you revise chapter one and two again, make your own mind maps. And the question that we have covered principally covers all the key concepts, the key words regarding in the both chapters, what are the key stakeholders, everything. And this chapter should be okay for everyone. Any uh, comment or any question? Sir. Yes, Grima. Sir. I have selected benefit only, but I have one question for stakeholder engagement. So as we have read in PMP, right? So we always deal with the stakeholder and throughout the life cycle. So even though project is the program is closed, still we deal with stakeholder. No, we maybe it in sustainment also. So why program stakeholder engagement is not an option? Because number one, this is not as per the PMI standard. That is the first dead answer. And technically speaking, Technically speaking, you, are you were talking about the project. Project is something else. Surely, I am uh, even after uh, technically speaking, benefits statement should also be as per the alignment with the organization strategy. If you see in the broad sense, I can only mm. sustain the benefits delivered from the program, and it must always be aligned with the strategy. Okay, and also it should be controlled by the governors. That is a broad concept, but when we are talking specifically about something which is to be continued after the program boundary is benefit sustainment because the, 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 in that case we hand over the things, the risk to the performing organization, which is, can be operations, which can be functional organization. So in that case, if we go strictly, not with our concepts, but with the PMI domain, it is only benefit sustainment, which can be continued after the program boundary has finished. And also one thing to remember in that, in that case, program manager will not be there. Program manager is only responsible to make the benefit sustainment plan. Once the benefit sustainment plan is been made and the program will close, the program manager will go out. And then after the program boundary, the functional manager or any other organization responsible for sustaining the benefits, no more program manager, okay? So only program benefits management will cross the boundary of program and also and specifically is for, uh, benefit sustainment activity. Okay, Any other question? Good.